So last time we looked at uh, how we're going to model the magnetic field. We're going to start by getting the magnetic vector potential, which is directly related to a current density through this differential equation. We set up a grid of x and y values where we have an i index for x and a j index for y. And we saw that this differential equation turned into this difference equation. Uh, we were interested in solving for Aij, a given point on the grid. It turns out Aij is going to be equal to the average of all of its neighboring values, the value to the right, the value to the left, the value above, the value below, plus a little correction piece from the current density. And so what we do to get the magnetic vector potential is we start out with a guess for Aij. We plug those values into here to get a better guess for Aij. We feed those values into here, get a better guess, feed those values into here, get a better guess, repeat until we're satisfied with the accuracy. So that's the magnetic vector potential. It is an interesting quantity, but it is not a thing you typically go around measuring. Typically, we work in terms of the magnetic field because that's what's directly related to the magnetic force QV cross B. The magnetic field is related to the magnetic vector potential through a curl. So we're taking the gradient, the three-dimensional derivative operator, crossing it with A to get our magnetic field. We're going to make the simplifying case that uh, A is only along the x and y directions because then b is only going to point along the z direction. So if a is completely contained inside the xy plane, b has to point either in the positive z direction or the negative z direction. And so the way we'll calculate this in our code, we're going to take our aij values that we get out of this difference equation and we'll set it up to where bz is just going to be the cross product between our derivative operator and our magnetic vector potential. So that means it's going to be the derivative of Ay with respect to x minus derivative of Ax with respect to y. That is something we can handle with another difference equation because I can think of this thing as being an Ay uh, at point, uh, let's see, this is going to go to the right and to the left. So i plus 1j minus a y at i minus 1j. So I've taken a step from one step to the right to one step to the left. So that's a total of two steps. So this is going to get divided by 2 times dx minus, I do the same thing over here. I have an ax. This is going to be uh, i with j plus 1 minus ax i with j minus 1, all divided by 2x, 2dx. So this is different from the divergence. It looks similar to our divergence calculation that we did for electric fields, but it's different in the sense that uh, here I am taking the y component and differentiating it with respect to x. Here I'm taking the x component, differentiating it with respect to y. That's what makes it the curl, is because it does this cross product between what vector component you are taking the derivative of and which position coordinate you are taking the derivative with respect to. And so this is something that our, our code can handle. Remember, it's got these y and x components stored as uh, elements in the array. So we've got all this information we need to calculate and display the magnetic field. All right, so here we've got our function from last time for having our current density along a wire with the current flowing up. Um, this is going to take through the exact same computation of the magnetic vector potential that we had before. This is the part that looks familiar. The current's flowing up, so the magnetic vector potential has to point up. Now we come to the calculation of the magnetic field B. Remember, B is given by the curl of A. So now we have to create an array for B. Here's the beautiful thing is B is only going to have a Z component because uh, our A only has X and Y components. B is only going to have a Z component, so I don't need a K index over here. I just need an I index and a J index for B. Here we come to our calculation of the curl. Here's the part where we take the change in the X component. So this is the change of A's X component when we move along the Y axis. So remember, we're, we're mixing and matching our X and Y here because we're taking the uh, change in the X component with respect to Y and we're taking the change in the y component with respect to x. So for this one, we're changing j. We're going from a point above to a point below. Here we're changing i. We're going from a point to the right to a point to the left. 
And so the z component for b there is just a y minus a x divided by the two times dx. We're going to graph this with a surface plot since we're only looking at one component. And here is our b field. So remember our current is going up along the y axis. So what you can see is that the magnetic field points up it's pointing up on one side of the wire and pointing down on the other. And this is exactly what you get for the right hand rule. Remember that if you've got your current going this way, so here's your current, then your magnetic field has to point around it. So it's going to go in a right handed pattern where it goes up along this edge, down along this edge, and basically it curves around in different directions as you go around the wire. And it goes around in a pattern where if you place the, the thumb of your right hand in the direction of the current, your fingers are going to curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. That's exactly what we're getting here. We're getting it going up on one side, down on the other. You can kind of imagine rotating this around and it fits around itself quite nicely. Uh, another situation we can look at is the magnetic field for our loop here. So as a reminder, we've got current going around in a loop. So we have a magnetic vector potential going around in a loop. There's another right hand rule you can use for this one, where you take your fingers, curl them around here, and your direction is going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. So based on the right hand rule, we should get a nice magnetic field in the center here. And lo and behold, that is what we get. We get our magnetic field pointing up along this way. Um, let's change the angle for this. I'd like to change the angle down a little bit. And there is our magnetic field as seen from the side. You can see it's pointing up uh, just along the interior here and then it's pointing down along the edges here. The up is a lot stronger than the down going part uh, just because it's all, you know, all those wires combining there as opposed to just one wire producing the effect here. So anyway, I think this is a great way to study these magnetic fields. You can change this loop to whatever geometry you want. You can make a lot of them to approximate a circle, get the magnetic field for a ring. I think this just makes it seem uh, a lot easier <laughs> to, to view these things in 3D as opposed to just cranking out the equations. Just for fun, let's do this. Let's suppose we put two uh, loops next to each other. Uh, so let's make a uh, another loop over here. Let's make this radius of the second wire, and uh, we'll do the, the the actually yeah. Let's do this. Let's do the same length and the same radius for each of the loops. And let's do this. Let's put XL equals, uh, let's see, these things are five units long. So we better actually, yeah, let's make it short. Let's make it two units long. Put this one over at three, uh, excuse me, at negative three. Put this one over at three. Uh, let me just check, make sure we're within our bounds here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going from negative five to five. So that ought to be fine there. And so what we'll do is say, uh, let's see, x minus L over two. Let's see, this is checking for the right edge. So we wanna go to minus XR, there we go. And then here for the left edge, we'll do minus X left. I suppose I could just do plus XR, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then same thing over here, we'll do X, uh, let's see, I want this to go over to the top edge. So we'll do minus XR. Oh wait, shoot, this does need to be a minus XR. I need to move the whole thing over to the right. Uh-huh. Move this over to the right. Move this over to the right. And now what I'll do, copy all of these down because I need to have this thing repeat again for the other loop. Uh, wrong enter spot. There we go paste. Come on up here. All right, we'll turn this into an elif. And now I just change all of the XRs to XLs. XL, XL. So this is going to get two loops right next to each other. All right, let's rerun this whole thing. Awesome, there's my magnetic vector potential. So I get one loop going around this way, one loop going around this way on opposite sides there. And so here is our magnetic field. Yeah, we get two copies of the same thing. Let's try moving them closer to each other because it's basically two identical copies of what we had before. 
Um, let's see, I could probably afford to move those closer by one each. Move this one one, move this one one. Um, let's try that. Let's try a uh, decreasing these magnitude by one, run the whole thing. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, there, there are two valleys there are starting to overlap. Uh, let's move them around. Uh, and you notice, of course, that the strongest place to get the magnetic field is where this thing is curling around the most. Uh, let's move them over. Uh, I think let, let's try to get these two wires on top of each other there. Uh, let's try to get this um, maybe like a 1.25, 1.25, 1 1.25. Last one we'll try here around the whole thing. Here we go. So their troughs are very deep here. Uh, the walls are, are starting to touch each other there. So yeah, they're, they're, they're combining in an interesting way there. So anyway, that's some interesting stuff you can use to visualize these magnetic fields. Hope that's useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.